The reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 17, and this is from the Good News Translation. <clears throat> you have been raised to life with Christ, so set your hearts on the things that are in heaven, where Christ sits on his throne at the right side of God. Keep your mind fixed on things there, not on things here on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your real life is Christ, and when he appears, then you too will appear with him and share in his glory. You must put to death, then, the earthly desires at work in you, such as sexual immorality, indecency, lust, evil passions, and greed, for greed is a form of idolatry. Because of such things, God's anger will come upon those who do not obey him. At one time, you yourselves used to live according to such desires when your life was dominated by them. But now you must get rid of all these things, anger, passion, and hateful feelings. No insults or obscene talk must ever come from your lips. Do not lie to one another, for you have put off the old self with its habits and have put on the new self. This is the new being which God, its creator, is constantly renewing in his own image in order to bring you to a full knowledge of himself. As a result, there is no longer any distinction between Gentiles and Jews, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarians, savages, slaves, and free, but Christ is all, Christ is in all. You are the people of God, he loved you and chose you for his own. So then you must clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another whenever any of you has a complaint against someone else. You must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. And to all these qualities add love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. The peace that Christ gives is to guide you in the decisions you make, for it is to this peace that God has called you together in the one body. And be thankful. Christ's message in all its richness must live in your hearts. Teach and instruct one another with all wisdom. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Sing to God with thanksgiving in your hearts. Everything you do or say then should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as you give thanks through him to God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Caleb's now going to share with us. Uh, let's just pray for him before he shares his message today. Mm. Jesus, thank you for Caleb. Thank you for the call upon his life, and thank you uh, that you are going to speak through him today. Please give him the words to say. Please fill him with peace, and may your wisdom be upon him as he shares today. And I pray that we will all have ears to hear and receive this message. Amen. Amen. Ko te mihi tuatahi ki te atua, nā nā ngā mea katoa e hanga. Ko te mihi tuarua ki te kaikarakia, ki te uh, kaiwaita, to be a uh, air band, uh, tēnā koutou. Um, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. It is an absolute um, privilege to be um, speaking this morning, also because um, some friends turned up out of the blue. Um, uh, Matthew and Tarina, uh, Matt, uh, studied with us at Theological College, and um, they planned to sneak in church this morning, but because it's a small town, we drove past them yesterday. <laughs> and they were like, oh, we didn't know we'd see you, and I was like, it's Whanganui. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it's so lovely to have you guys here with us. Um, uh, great, great friends. Um, uh, this morning, um, we are uh, obviously partway through our sermon series, just looking at this passage again and again and again. Uh, who's had a chance to memorize it? Well done. Who's, had who's memorized chunks of it or bits of it? Well done. Okay. The, I, I, I set out the target at the beginning that we needed to memorize this whole passage because memorizing scripture actually is vitally important for your transformation. It's really, really important. Um, and so we're actually going to do it today. 
I'm serious. <laughs> you're, you're laughing, but I've got a whole load of things here. So, um, uh, Tabs and Billy, do you mind distributing these, please? So, uh, uh, I'll take this. Um, one per person. Um, uh, this, this bit in the uh, passage we're looking at today is the bit in the passage where it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Yeah? So, um, so as, you, as you teach and admonish one another with, um, uh, with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Yes? So this is, this is allowing God's word to reshape you. Now, um, let me read you a couple of quotes that you'll see on the top of your page. And surprise, surprise, the quote is from... Dallas Willard, that's right. So after Jesus, the Apostle Paul and David, um, Moses probably next, and then Dallas Willard. Um, the Bible memorization is absolutely fundamental to spiritual formation. This is Dallas saying, if I had to choose between all the disciplines of the spiritual life, I would choose Bible memorization because it is a fundamental way of filling our minds with what it needs. The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. That's where you need it. And how does it get in your mouth? Memorization. In fact, Dallas, I was reading this at our Soul Lab recently where we were talking about memorization. Dallas said that he would never take on pastoring a congregation without giving regular teaching and, and courses on how to memorize scripture. Um, what does the Bible say about memorizing scripture? I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. I'm going to talk about um, why we do it, why we uh, struggle with it, and then we're going to have a hash at it. This morning, okay. Has everyone got a booklet? Uh, there is enough to go around. Everyone got one? Does anyone need a larger print one? No? Great. Well, I've got some larger print ones if you need those. Okay, um, uh, there's a, I've got a few verses here on what Scripture talks about Scripture. But uh, Psalm 1 is the one that I wanted to look at here. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. Such a one is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Did you catch that? So, so the life of prospering, the life of leaves not withering, in all seasons. It doesn't say if you memorize scripture, you follow Jesus, you're going to have, a, have a, a happy time all the time. That's not what it says. It says you're not going to have a happy time. Seasons of life come and go. But if you want your leaves to prosper at all times, if you want to, the antithesis here is you can, you can walk in the counsel of the wicked or sit in the seat of scoffers. You know what I mean? You can, you can end up in destructive thoughts and life. But the way you get out of that, the way you get all the prospering is meditating on the law day and night. Yeah? How do you meditate on the law day and night? Well, you know, back in the day when they heard this, um, they didn't have electricity. So how do you meditate at night time? You know, you don't get out your scroll and read that. Do you know what I mean? Because you can't, it's dark. Yeah, they memorized it. You have to remember that most of the people who received scripture first time around couldn't even read. Yeah, scripture was designed to be heard and then memorized. And then it shaped them. That's why... It was normal, um, and it was a requirement, if you were to be a Pharisee, if you would be in my position, teaching in a, in a synagogue, that you would have had to memorize the first five books of the Bible. Okay? Now, the ability that Jesus had to teach probably speaks to the fact that he'd actually memorized the whole Old Testament. I'm not talking about he knew it. I'm talking about he'd memorized it. Yeah? There's a guy called Andrew Davis, who um, I've been learning some stuff on about Bible memorization recently. And in 2017, I haven't found out what since then. He doesn't say anything on his own website. But other people talk about him. At that point, he'd memorized 43 books of the Bible. The whole thing. 43 books out of 66. Yeah? Isn't that amazing? Can you imagine having that at your disposal? Yeah, and he re, he re goes over it. It's not like he memorized it once and now he's forgotten it. He, re, he has training schemes of how to rememorize it because he wants to shape his mind that way. This is what, I mean, the passage there in Joshua and also in Deuteronomy, it talks about having the law in your, uh, in your, um, uh, upon your hearts, impress them upon your hearts, impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Yes? You've got to be, like, 
you fill your mind already with all sorts of things, whether that's the spiral of stuff that Tabs was, you know, confessing, which we all struggle with, bits of anxiety that spin around our head. Well, do you want that to shape your mind? Well, it currently does, because that's what you spend most of your time thinking about. A few years ago, I was listening to a neurological silent, sci scientist um, talk about the fact that if you think about a thought, okay, for seven minutes, for 21 days, there's a, literally a little thing that grows in your, head, in your brain, okay? This little kind of, it looks like a cauliflower, okay? And it's attached to your neurons, and it becomes a fixed thought that's in your mind, okay? Seven minutes, 21 days. Okay? That means if you worried for seven minutes for 21 days about getting COVID in the last two years, which I know you all did to different degrees, that means that's a fixed thought in your head. And it will be there until you choose to remove it. I'm not saying something here from scripture, I'm just saying something from biological science. Okay? You can, you can track it, you can, they can see it on the scans. Yeah? So, I mean, this is what the Bible writers knew already. They didn't know what the neurons were doing, but they, but they knew, yes, that that's why they meditate on the Scripture. Because if you meditate on Scripture day and night, if you fill your mind with it and you think of it for just seven minutes, for 21 days, that new thought is in your head. Do you know what I mean? Can you imagine if you meditated on perfect love casts out all fear for seven minutes, just for 21 days? It's only seven minutes, folks. It's only seven minutes. You know, you almost brush your teeth that long. I hope you do. <laughs> Mark Huang will be on you. He's not here today. But if you don't, do you know what I mean? So that, anyway, this is just the, so Scripture tells us about here. If you accept my words, store my commands within you, um, uh, you know, th then the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth. Out, out comes knowledge and understanding. Keep my words, store my commands within you. Have them, write them, um, uh, teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. That's what scripture says about it. Here's four things that I think why it's really important to memorize scripture. The first is, is that I then have the Bible when I don't have my Bible. Okay? Um, I said this at Soul Lab the other day. Um, uh, if you are needing, you know, wanting to memorize or think through scripture while you're doing the washing up, well, you can't do that without getting your Bible wet. Yeah? Unless it's in your head. And then you're spinning it around and around. I mean, I find it really helpful when I'm praying for people. Really helpful. Mostly because, well, God's given better words in the Bible than, than I have. Yeah? Hands down. That's not even a comparison. It's a silly thing to say. Of course it's better to pray scripture than to pray Caleb's thoughts. You know? I've got some nice thoughts. But I haven't got deep wisdom and knowledge. You know? But God does. So when I'm praying for someone or doing prayer ministry or if I'm just in prayer or I'm walking along the street and I'm praying for someone, then those, those thoughts come in and I pray those things, particularly if I'm praying against something. If you notice in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus is being tempted by Satan, how does he respond to him? With scripture. Did he pull out his scroll? He didn't have one with him in the desert. He, he should have got a little, you know, a little one, but he didn't. Do you know what I mean? He didn't. He'd memorized Deuteronomy. That's why it came out at that moment. Do you know what I mean? Because he'd memorized it. So it's there when I don't have my Bible. The next is it helps with meditation. Meditation, you can open up your Bible, but if you're just looking and looking and looking, that does help with meditation. But if you sink it into your head, it then mulls around. The other day I was sitting praying through some things, and I sat down, and um, after, I don't know how long it takes you to kind of still yourself. It takes me sometimes quite a while to still myself because of all the busyness of my life and, um, uh, and stuff that spins in my head. But I, I quietened my soul. And it took about 10 minutes. And after then, I said, God, what do you want to say to me this morning? And what came to my mind was Psalm 1, that psalm we just, um, you know, read through. And so I then started playing that through in my head. I didn't have to look it up in my Bible and get distracted by whatever bookmark I've got in there or something else. I just popped in and my, my eyes were still closed. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the way of the wicked, who does not stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the city scoffers, but whose delight. And suddenly God went boom. And the word delight stood out for me. And I thought, okay, God, what are you saying about that? And then I went on meditating and praying through that for the next 30 minutes. But I had that because that's in my head, you know? It helps with study. 
Um, uh, I remember Matt and I poring over quotes to each other. Matt was a much better reader than I am because he's an, an English teacher. And so I, I used to copy most of Matt's work when I was doing my theology degree. Like, actually. Um, <laughs> Matt would say, here, I've done this reading. Have you done this reading? I'd say, oh, uh, not yet. And then he'd share me his highlights and I'd highlight them out. But when you're studying the word or studying in any form, if you've got in your mind, like, I mean, this happens to me all the time. I'll be reading a passage and I'll go, oh, this reminds me of that passage. Do you know what I mean? Or that ties to that thing there. And you can spend the next 15 minutes trying to find it because you remember it was somewhere in Deuteronomy, maybe it was Judges. Do you know what I mean? But actually, if you memorized it, you go, oh yeah, that's the same as Psalm 23, or that's the same as Psalm 62, or do you know what I mean? It helps with your study. The most important reason why I think memorization is important, and this is what Dallas was saying at the front, is that it reshapes my mind. I fill my mind with godly things. You literally get that neurological change. We could talk about that for ages. I'm just going to talk briefly about five reasons why people say I can't memorize. Okay? And I'm hoping that any resistances that you've got right now fit into these five. Okay? Or four, and then the last one I'll talk about. The first one is I don't have a good memory. Okay? That's what most people are probably sitting there going, I don't have a good memory. Well, I just tell you, it's actually not true. It's not true. Yeah? You don't have to remind yourself every time you tie your shoelace, how do I tie my shoelace? I can't remember how to tie my shoelace. Do you know what I mean? You've remembered how to tie your shoelace, and in fact, you do it every day. If you have shoelaces, so unless you're, someone has Velcro or slip-ons. But do you know what I mean? You don't go, oh my goodness, and which drawer in my kitchen has our cutlery? Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's always the top one. That's right. You know where it is. Now, you might lose the wooden spoon, sure, but that's because you can't quite remember that individual thing. But the, you, you memorize that. You know songs that get stuck in your head, yeah? We just sang Happy Celebration Day. That's just something because we sing it every week here, and now it's stuck in your head. Do you know what I mean? You can sing some of the worship songs with your eyes closed. I know that because I see you all when I'm leading worship, you know? You know how great thou art. Yeah, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved. Yeah, see, you do have a good memory, but you've told yourself you don't, and it's not true. I will say here, though, that your memory is a muscle, and it needs training, okay? And you can train it, and I suggest you do, okay? Because you can learn all sorts of things this way. So I was an actor. That was my profession before I became a priest, so I memorized heaps of stuff. Like we used to have to learn sonnets overnight. And then, would, I mean, actually, that was actually quite easy. You know, there's only 14 lines. It was like, I, I was performed in plays where I spoke for 45 minutes. There's 45 minutes worth of text. But I, you just, I just learned it. That's just a skill you train yourself in. I didn't have it when I was, you know, before I went to drama school, but now I do. You know, I was, uh, I was started out ministry and this um, uh, couple of mine who were preaching on the book of James came to me and said, would you, um, would you, w- uh, we would really love it if when the, um, through this conference, that instead of somebody reading the book of James, you know, each, each day, the little bit that we're studying, whether it could be memorized. And I said, yeah, I could get a team of people to do that. They said, well, actually, we were actually thinking that you could do it. I said, What? They said, if you could memorize the book of James. I said, the whole thing? And they said, yeah. You were an actor, weren't you? Yeah. And so I did. And it was amazing. It was one of the deepest transformational times of my life. Because I was spending so much time repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating repeating scripture. It's still there now. Whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete and lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. That the believer who is lowly boasts... Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah? It's there. I have to keep going over it, otherwise I forget it. There's some bits later on in James I don't remember very well. But it's there. It's in my mind. 
You have to ask the young leaders who are in our house who we disciple, almost every time when they say, oh, I'm going through this struggle, I say, yes, that's good news. And they go, oh, really? And I say, that's because whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy. And I literally comes out of my mouth because it's there. You do have good capacity and memory. I don't have time, I'm too busy. Well, let's just throw that one out. You just have re rung prioritized. If you want to do anything, you just prioritize, okay? We're talking about organizing our life around Jesus, so you can make it a priority. I tried it before and it didn't work. It may be that you didn't give it a good enough shot. I've got a little bit of technique I'm going to teach, um, but you just need to get into it and keep going. I read it every day. I have it on my phone. Why do I need to memorize it? Yeah, well, we just talked about all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Any other resistances? Why memorize it if you're going to forget in a year? We'll keep going over it. Yeah, and it'll shape you now. Yeah. I had a 90-year-old lady come to me once, came to one of my workshops on memorization. This was a number of years ago. And she said to me, I've never been able to memorize scripture. And I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure that's actually true. You know, I said, the Lord is my shepherd. I, she recited the rest of the verse. I said, you've memorized one already. And I took her in there and we went through and she memorized a psalm in an hour. Just a short it was beautiful. It's possible. What translation do I use is a question that normally comes up. Oh, just find the one that works best for you. Yeah? If you can learn it in Greek, even better. But I, <laughs> I don't read Greek. So, so whatever translation you get is a translation, okay? And, you know, let's remind ourselves, too, that the Gospels are written in Greek and Jesus didn't speak in Greek. So it's a translation already anyway. So let's not get caught on that. Um, let's, let's come in. and I mean, I, I tend to find the NIV or the NRSV are the ones that I find most helpful. But that's because I grew up with the NIV. So as a kid, I've memorized heaps of those already. So that's, really, so that's why I stick with mostly that. I stick with the NRSV because that's what we use to study with, and I find it really helpful. But, um, but you might find the message helpful or, or whatever it is, or the good news version that Karen was reading. Um, so and, uh, um, uh, Davis, the guy I was talking about earlier who's memorized uh, heaps and heaps of books, he talks about m memorizing not just a passage but a book. And he talks about that this is his strategy. He looks at a passage or a book, and he counts the verses and then divides it by how many you'll learn in a week. It just sounds simple, eh? So, for example, he, just, he, he says Ephesians has 155 verses. So at the rate of six verses a, per week, which will probably take you 10, 10 minutes a day, which is not very long, 10 minutes a day, six verses a week, and then he gives you 10% just for, um, you know, for when you forget, etc. That means that you will memorize Ephesians by Christmas. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? No, what do you say? That's because we think we can't do it. You just got to start, okay? So I'm just going to give you four things that I find helpful when I memorize. Well, there's one thing overall, and then there's four things. The main thing is repetition, okay? When you memorized your times tables at school, when you memorized your bit that you had to do for your school assembly or school production, you just repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated, and that is all I do. I repeat, I repeat, I just repeat in certain ways. Okay, you just go over and over again. And isn't that amazing? Don't you want to go over and over and over again, Psalm 23? Yeah? Yes, you do. You want that to be ringing in your head. So I've got four things that I came, uh, I've come up with. Um, it happens to have an acronym, which is VAPE. Um, so do this version rather than the other version. Okay, um, uh, this one doesn't uh, cause your lungs... To... Anyway. Okay, uh, the first one is visual. Okay, we learn visually. Okay, so see it on the page. Um, Davis talks about, uh, he talks about reading it 10 times and then putting it down and just seeing how much you've got. Okay, because you see it, it, it embeds um, uh, images in your head. I also find that I make marks on the words or circle certain things or, um, uh, you know, highlight bits. So visually I find really helpful. The next is oral, as in like that, um, hearing. Remember the first here is a scripture heard it. Yes? Um, I put in here oral as well because after they memorized it, they then spoke it out. You need to hear yourself saying it. Yes? That's how you remember it. That's why you remember all those lines from the movies that you love, or Blackadder or whatever, you know, it's because it's in you. Okay, the next one is physical. Okay? You have muscle memory. 
When I hit a tennis ball, it always goes like that because I've trained in it. I have muscle memory of how to hit a top spin. You have muscle memory about when your feet go down on your pedals when you're driving, yeah? So muscle memory, so you need to do, be physical. I actually move my body a lot, but you have to get up and move around, okay? You have to speak it out loud. Um, your mouth will remember it too. And the last one is environment, okay? Find a space where there's no distractions or you're not going to be interrupted. But also, this is something that um, I talked about the other day at Soul Lab, was um, the environment of what you're learning it for, okay? For some people... Um, learning it so that you can stand up and share it to other people is really helpful. That pressure gives you some help, yeah? So you could recite it at your small group, yes? That, if that's helpful for you, put that into play. If you're like someone who that's not helpful for, I was hearing of someone in Tabs' small group who memorized the whole of Colossians 3, 1 to 17 recently, they, said they didn't even admit they were going to memorize it because if they did, they knew that they would have pressure upon them. And so instead, they just went to go do it for fun because it was, it was better that way. And now they've learned it. F know which way works best for you, yeah? Okay. Follow your booklet, find a piece. Choose a passage. I've just chosen some of my favorite ones. Um, ones that I think are beautiful and are worthy of meditating on over and over and over again. So just flip through Psalm 1, Psalm 23, John 15, Philippians 4, Romans 8. The first part of Colossians 1, 15 to 20. And then on the last two there is Colossians 3, the one I've invited you to learn. Choose which one you'd like to do. And what I want you to do is um, we're going to do this aloud because it doesn't work unless you do it aloud. You literally can't remember it unless you do it aloud. Um, uh, I invite you to stand up and maybe move into a different place. Um, we're all going to do this at the same time, so just get over the vulnerability, all right? <laughs> and you're going to say it aloud 10 times looking at it, and then you're going to put it down and see how much you've got. Okay, just one verse. Just use the first verse of Psalm 23 or John 15 or whatever it is. Just the first verse. You're going to read it through 10 times and then you're going to say it aloud. Okay, so up on your feet if you can. Find a little space. Jesus, I pray you bless us that our mind would be open to this and would be softened. So bless us now as we do this. Amen. Go for it. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine and you. Okay. Awesome. I forgot to say to those who are joining online, sorry that I haven't given you a booklet, but just grab a Bible and choose any passage you like. Um, anybody uh, feel brave enough to just give it a hash without the text? No, that's good. That's awesome. Elton. Look, we are all 
So good. Others? Two more? I think so. Two more? Anna? So good. Anyway, one more? Di? You can do nothing. Awesome. Isn't that cool? You just gave like 90 seconds to two minutes. All right, so we're now going to do another technique that I use, okay? And this is that I take word by word. Okay, this I find really helpful in meditating on it. So, for example, I, I am... I am the, I am the vine, okay? And each time I add a word on, I, I, I think about that word. So I, he's talking about himself. This is the I am, the I, and the next word is am. I am, this is the Moses moment where he's, you know, uh, you know the, the flaming bush. And I am the, as in there isn't another, the, the only one. I am the vine, okay? What does that look like? What does it mean for God to be the vine? Those thoughts are spinning in my head while I'm saying that. I, I am, I am the the, I am the vine, I am the vine, you, oh, now he's talking to me, okay, you know, what, what am I supposed to be, I am the vine, you are, okay, here we go, here's my status, you are the branches, okay, okay, that's a beautiful image, I'm connected to him, does that make sense? So I'm just doing that, so take it one, one word at a time, okay, and um, we'll just have another go at that now, off you go. I am the vine, you, I, I am, I am, I am the, I am the vine, I am the vine, I am the vine, you, I am the vine, you are, I am the vine, you are the, I am the vine, you are the branches, I am the vine, you are the branches, if, 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 if you, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you, if you remain, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain, if you remain in, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I, if you remain in me and I in you, if you remain in me and I in you, you will. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear. You will bear much. You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you, if you do, if you do not. Okay. Couple more volunteers. I'm not going to ask anybody, you know, don't be worried that I'm going to point at you and say you have to go. So this is, I don't want to put that pressure on. Um, but uh, anybody ever want to volunteer? Yvonne? Yeah. Mm. Isn't that worthy of meditating on? Hey? Yeah. A couple other volunteers? Yeah. So good. So many people have mentioned to me that verse recently because they've been memorizing it and they've gone, Yeah, I was doing this, but I set my mind on things that are above. Do you know what I mean? I've had so many people say that to me because it's such a helpful verse. Keep setting, like Billy's image of jelly, you know, set. Okay. Anyone else? Diane? If. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me. Awesome. That's so good. One more. Somebody who's telling themselves, oh, I'm not going to volunteer. Go on, volunteer. That's awesome. Were you going to do more? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah? Let your gentleness be known to everyone. You know, remind yourself of that. Otherwise, you remind yourself of how frustrated you are with your neighbor or with your brother or your sister. Do you know what I mean? But instead, let your gentleness be known to everyone. If you keep thinking that, you end up being gentle. Do you know what I mean? Well done, team. Grab yourselves a seat. I highly recommend that you take this home and you do it again. Okay? I highly recommend you take that same verse that you've just taken and you take it home and do it again. Okay? Go over that again and embed it deeply. Now, just a couple of other words uh, of encouragement. Um, uh, Davis talks about uh, that he memorizes the, the numbers of the verses and the chapters. Um, I've never done that. Um, I, I could say my wish that I did. Um, uh, it feels like a clunky method to me. Um, it feels like it gets in the way of the thoughts. And I, you know, when it was originally written, they weren't there. But for him, he doesn't forget verses, you know, because he's got them all there. Yeah. And so if some, you know, and if he's thinking of a verse, he knows exactly where it is because it's Colossians 3 verse two, you know, like we had over here or Psalm 23. So for example, he would have Colossians 3 one, since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things that are, uh, are above, where Christ is seated on the heavenly, uh, seated at the right hand of the Father. Three, two, um, uh, set your minds on things. Uh, set your minds on things that are above, not on earthly things. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ on God. Three, three, and then move on. Does that make sense? So you could do that if you like. That would be a. That would probably be. A, I mean, he finds it helpful, and he's learned way more than I have. Um, if you want to look his name, I can't remember his um, first name. Davis is his second name. I said it earlier. Did anyone? So Andrew. Okay, Andrew Davis. You can look him up. He's a pastor of a church. Um, he started his memorization before he was a pastor of a church when he was actually an engineer, um, and uh, he just fell in love with memorizing. So um, he's got a little booklet that um, that gives you some guidance, much as similar as what I've just talked about here, um, uh, but in more detail. So you can look his up too. Um, but jump in and, fi- and, and do this. Can you imagine how much this would shape you? Yeah? This is allowing the word of Christ to dwell in you richly. So I just remind you again, so visual, look at it, see it. Um, that's, that's how we remember things. Oral, um, uh, have it like listen to an audio book that's also helpful but also listen to yourself saying it hearing it aloud you need to speak it aloud it doesn't work unless you speak it aloud physical i don't think it works unless you move around okay i don't think it does i have a friend who was i'd cast as the lead role in a play and he said to me yeah i've memorized all of my stuff and uh, he'd tested it with his wife and he'd been sitting down and then he got up into the rehearsal room he couldn't remember any of it because his body hadn't been engaged. Isn't that fascinating? Um, so then, we, then I said to him, you need to go home and do it again, but move around the space. So I walk around the space. I actually find I do this you know, when I'm out in the garden or I'm out you know, somewhere, and I pace and I think through those things because it's physical. And then ensuring that you've got the right environment and, and what it is you're learning for. Yeah? That is really helpful. Doing the... The 10, reading 10, and then putting it aside and seeing how much you got. But I find the one that I've used most often is the word by word. And every new phrase, I start again. So, for example, in the I am the vine, you are the branches, if you remain in me and I in you. So I would have gone, I am, uh, you know, I am the vine, you are the branches. Um, stop. If. If you. If you remain. If you remain in me. Does that make sense? So every new phrase, I do it again. Otherwise, you're going to spend ages going back over and over and over and over and it will take you a long time. So that's what I recommend. Anna, you had a question? Something I've used that's helpful is when you're looking at it, when you're reciting it, mm. That's a really cool thing. That's what, I don't know if you did that at Sunday school, but we used to do that at Sunday school when we were memorizing um, stuff that you'd, you'd cover up a few of the words or people would have them on, you know, and you'd turn them upside down. Did you do those techniques? Yeah, um, so that's that's also helpful. Cover up half the line, or cover up the other half of the line, um, just to kind of test yourself, like you would have done when you're at school. Die. If you write it out, yeah, uh, Victoria finds it really helpful to write. So um, whichever passages she's memorising are on the back of our toilet door, okay? And so cur- currently we've got Colossians 3, 1 to 17 in English and Taleo. So it's right there. So, um, so it's helping me because I'm, you know, I'm trying to memorise it in Taleo as well. So it's, um, but it's right there. She's found it easy to write out. Some people find that really helpful. Diane. I have a reference that might be helpful going back to 
going back to your comments about neuroscience and yeah. formation of thoughts in the brain. I, I have read a book by Dr. Caroline Leaf, yes. a Christian neuroscience, and she speaks very powerfully to how these thoughts get formed, but she also gives a very good process called neurocycling about deconstructing the thoughts. Yes. Um, and she's written a book called Switch On Your Brain, which I have if anyone wants to borrow, and she's also written a really good devotional, so I mentioned that. Cool. Was that the is that the same lady? I think it might have been the lady that I got the neuroscience thing from. Um, Caroline, Leaf. Caroline Leaf. Okay. Yeah. Switch on your brain. About uh, so not just about learning new things, but also deconstructing the things that are already there. So the lies you've got that you've said over yourself for years. Um, in the name of Jesus, you can break those. He he wants to get in there and, and change those. So thank you for that, Diane. Let me pray um, as we've uh, just been engaging in. Um, some deep spiritual work. Jesus, we thank you so much for the joy of the children in this space. We thank you that they're welcome here. We thank you for the space that they've had down in the lower lounge. We thank you too for what we've had in here. And Lord, I pray that like the seeds that the farmer scatters, that the enemy would not be able to come and take any of this away that this would have embedded deeply in our minds. And Father, in fact, it would be something that bears um, fruit or grows so that it produces a hundredfold. Lord, I pray that you would um, bless our brains with courage um, and desire to memorize your word, that it would dwell in us richly. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.